So boys and girls, this is part two of our handstand push-up progression, frog pose or crow pose. Uh, so I'm going to show you a few things that they didn't really show in convict, not because they didn't want to. It's just some stuff that I figured out for myself to get into the crow pose and some stuff that's really neat for the abdomen as well. So there's this neat exercise in yoga called happy baby pose. I'll show you something neat, right? So happy baby pose is generally this. And watch. So pretend I'm in a 180 degree angle and I'm in a crow pose, right? So it's the exact same pose. So why am I showing you this exercise? It's to basically get the flexibility in the legs, in the groins, and stuff like this. Now the next thing I want to show you is a little sweet ab exercise that'll help you when you get into your handstand, right? It'll engage your abs. So try and bring the hands inside and you go for 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. So why am I showing you this ab exercise? It's very simple. When you get into a handstand or headstand, you're gonna need the engagement of the abs to get you up. Right? Why am I showing you a happy baby pose? Very simple. If you can't bring your feet here, right? Let's say that you're tight everywhere. Well, this tightness will translate when you're standing up and trying to lower down to come to crow pose. So I've seen some people trying to do stuff like crow pose and they just can't do it because they can't get their hands to the floor, right? They're too tight in this area. So that area, before you go to bed or uh, after you wake up in your bed, you can practice it really comfortably or even when you're watching a movie, right? The next thing about crow pose, which is neat, you don't have to try and come into it straight away. You can actually lift one foot, the opposite foot, one foot, and the opposite foot. Then the next one you could do is just teeter-totter back and forth, right? back and forth and so I'm actually gonna time it for a minute and so once you're ready to do the full crow pose and you're done teeter-tottering back and forth you just get a little lift off right and you just stay here and you breathe very comfortably and you just relax every possible muscle and so remember what I told you guys in our push-up right spread the fingers and so as Pavel says the more the hands and fingers are spread the more it engages the biceps, the triceps. If the fingers and hands are flimsy, the rest of your arm will be flimsy. So engage every possible muscle possible, right? Look to the floor, continue breathing deep. We reach the 30 second point, right? So this must be a little boring to watch, but it's just to show you that a minute crow is very achievable. And I actually have to thank one of my teachers, Tara, for this. She helped me get to this level of crow pose, yeah? So just a few more breaths, 10 more seconds, perfect, and start to lower. Now, if you want to go above and beyond the crow pose, there's the crane pose, right? So crow pose, you're cradling the knee on the triceps, and crane pose, you're cradling the knees into the armpit. Arms as straight as possible, I'm still working on this myself. And this is crane, right? If you're courageous at some point, which we're gonna get into part three, you can actually lift into headstand or handstand from here. So we're gonna do that. Headstand one first, come back to crow pose, and handstand. I'll see you guys in part three.